Hi, my name is Hari Subramaniam, and I'm going to talk about our CHI 2024 paper on the cognitive challenges and prompt-based interactions with LLMs. This work is done in collaboration with Roy P., Chris Pondock, and Manisha Grawala from Stanford University, and Colleen Seifert from the University of Michigan. Say I want to write a wedding toast for my best friend Taylor. I can ask ChatGPT to do it. And this is what I get. It's probably not something I want to use. It's quite generic and maybe boring. So how do I improve it? Well, I can try to be a little bit more specific in my intention and tell ChatGPT what kind of toast I want. I want it to be short and funny and creative. I can also ask GPT to ask me questions about what it needs to know to generate a good toast. In response, GPT gives me a set of questions. <clears throat> And then I can respond to those questions and it's already feeling like a lot of work. But I get something better. It's not what I want. Um, there are too many references to the pigeon story and I want the ending to be more heartfelt and less humorous. And of course I can continue this back and forth prompting. But at this point it feels like playing uh, 20 questions with ChatGPT, which is not something most of us wanna do. <clears throat> The reality is that prompt-based interactions are difficult and tedious. If you're trying to get it to generate something more specific, it takes a lot of back and forth, and at some point you just get frustrated. It's inefficient and not sustainable. So in our Kai paper, we characterize the nature of these challenges, drawing from theories and models in cognitive sciences and HCI to understand how we can really improve our interactions with LLMs. Let's start with a popular model in HCI on interacting with computers to get tasks done. Most of us are likely familiar with the seven-stage model by Ed Hutchins, Jim Holland, and Don Norman with the gulf of execution and evaluation. So let's start there. And to unpack this model, let's consider a simple example of, say, writing a Wikipedia article on chocolate using the Microsoft Word. And this is our goal. And based on the goal, you might form the intention to maybe say write an outline structure first that you want to talk about the history, cultural significance, production, and varieties. You will then translate these intentions into actions and with this involves adding a bullet list and typing each topic item. Um, <clears throat> with Word, like what you see is what you get. So as you're writing, you can check whether your intentions and actions are correctly executed. Um, maybe it does, and then you, you sort of move on, or you realize that perhaps the cultural significance should be a sub-point in the history, and you can make that adjustment. But there's one big component that makes this all possible, but it's missing in this model. And that is uh, the system mental model. The system mental model comprises of knowledge about how the system operates, including its constituent parts and their interrelations, their inherent processes, and their impact on the system. For Microsoft Word, the model could be that Word is a document format with actions that can be applied to individual characters, paragraphs, or the entire document. And such system mental models are essential to give us this predictive and explanatory power when we are interacting with systems. It allows us to mentally simulate the action before executing it. <clears throat> it's a system mental model that let, lets us go from, I want to write an outline structure to I want to add these four bullet points. <clears throat> And that's not it. There's another component uh, that we have taken for granted so far in HCI, and that is the role of interactions and how uh, intentions and how we formulate intentions. So how did we go from I want to write an article on chocolate to I want to discuss these four specific topics? In cognitive psychology, intentions are situated pursuits of a goal that is attainable through the execution of a process. It's the how, and it can include declarative knowledge, procedural knowledge, decision points, and cognitive skills. And intentions are often hierarchical, tool-dependent, <clears throat> and they emerge during the process of achieving the goal. It's very hard to form a complex set of intentions up front before we actually write the article, so it's, it's more of an emergent process. 
So let's look a little bit more detail about into farming intentions. At a high level for generative tasks, um, such as writing, coding, uh, creating art, information formation, uh, <clears throat> intention consists of three stages. Uh, planning, uh, which is thinking about the current state of the goal and the desired state and scanning through the space of actions to find the right next action, whether it's creating an outline or engaging in free writing. Then is execution, which is about like acting out the intended actions while monitoring in real time the course of the action. And finally, evaluation is seeing whether the action is meeting the goal. And we often do this iteratively, like we plan a little, do a little, plan a little, do a little, plan a little, and do a little. And oftentimes, our cognitive task processes and these system mental models interact. It could be that <clears throat> as you're writing this article, you come up with a really long section heading, say ethical and environmental implications of cacao bean farming in various tropical regions and the socioeconomic impact. And then you simulate this in your mind using the mental model about like how you know word works and realize that this title is too long and it may take up multiple lines and look awkward then you may make up this action plan to type it and reduce the font size, uh, or you may go back to the planning process to formulate a shorter title. And for the most part, we're not aware of this as we are interacting with software systems, and that's partly because of design. Designers do a really good job of aligning these system uh, designs with our cognitive task processes, and we operate, uh, operate mostly at the system mental model level. That is, designers work really hard to minimize the gulf of execution and evaluation and also help us acquire and align uh, the design with our mental models. But when we think about LLMs, we don't have good predictive mental models about how the LLM works. And LLMs understand natural language, so we don't really need explicit actions. And since these models are generative, uh, we only need to tell them a planned intention. So we're going from plan do to plan evaluate. And this absence of mental models and action space results in a new kind of gulf that we are calling the gulf of envisioning. More concretely, the gulf of um, envisioning is the distance between humans' initial intentions for a goal and their formulation of a prompt that foresees how LLM capabilities can be leveraged to generate a high quality response. Again, if we just want a response or even a satisfactory response, like asking an LLM to write a medieval ballad for assembling an IKEA chair, we may not care about envisioning, but where if we are aiming for high quality answers that align with our specific goals, then we tend to encounter the gulf of envisioning. Specifically, the gulf of envisioning uh, consists of at least three kinds of gaps, uh, which include the capability gap, the instruction gap, and the intentionality gap. The capability gap uh, is determining what is the right expression of the LLM's capability that would get you the output that you want. LLMs are, LLMs are trained on massive amounts of data and they exhibit dynamic capabilities and the space of capabilities also is also really vast. So for instance, if you're trying to summarize a document, you can use a range of expressions from make this one page to omit unnecessary details to ask it to retain the main argument. Uh, so which prompt uh, would you choose? Because we don't have a good predictive model of the LLMs, we either need to base it on how we would do it or have a good theory of mind of how others who have done this task could have made it into the training set. And this is a rather difficult task. The second is the instruction gap. Because LLMs are sensitive to linguistic precision, the way you phrase the prompt gives you different outputs, and users often struggle to find the right articulation of the intention that would give them the response they actually need. One thing we hear a lot is that LLMs are just like talking to another person, but we argue that this is not the case. In human-human interaction, we often mean the gist of what we are saying, unless it's uh, in cases like reciting a poetry, 
uh, we have theory of mind of other people that we are interacting with and we often engage in dynamic adjustments like asking for clarifications and so on. But LLMs, on the other hand, are sensitive to linguistic variations, they lack a theory of mind about humans, and the interactions are often static. So if I go and type cat dog in ChatGPT, it'll give me a long description of what a cat is and what a dog is. But if I say that to another human, they would ask me, what did I mean? The third is the intentionality gap. Um, this, uh, we, we're borrowing this term from philosophy where intentionality is the mental state of aboutness or being aware of situations. With LLMs, we are foregoing the act of manually executing, like writing things ourselves or painting, so we don't have good internal cognitive benchmarks for evaluating the outputs. So we're going from plan to evaluation, and there's a lack of clarity about what the output should be or what it could have been. This makes it hard to assess whether this is the best output or whether the LLM can do better with specific prompt changes. We refer you to the paper for complete details on these gaps and our recommendation for addressing them. Thank you for watching.